Well, I know I miss more than a hit with a face that was launched to sink, and I seldom feel the bright relief. It's been the worst day since yesterday. Welcome back to the Closet of Anger. I hope you enjoy it, as usual. I'm pretty sure you usually enjoy it. We did a special segment today. I hope that you uh, you noticed the special intro we've done for it. Because um, today, we are doing a segment called Broken Sober, for we are broke and sober. And sober. So, usually we have these crappy jobs. I don't know about you, my job's crappy. Is your job crappy? That's yeah, not that great. That's good, because if you said great, I would totally had to smack you for a lighter. Yeah. And uh, usually we just go to these crappy jobs 40 hours a week, brainless work. Not much we have to do at work. Hmm. Not much. No. Slow times in season. But with the dying of the economy, who's not going to have a slow day or two? Yeah. So we go to these crappy jobs for 40 hours a week, and they give us a paycheck every week or two weeks, or whenever the hell they decide to pay us. Hopefully it's soon. My boss is watching this. Could use money at this date. Now, right now. Right now. But we didn't have any money because hard times, the economy dying, also our jobs are dying. So we didn't have any beer money. We had to work for beer money this time. Extra hard. Yeah. Instead of just going to work, we actually had to do stuff for beer. You'll notice there's no more clothes in the closet. Chris, where'd your clothes go? Um, well, I took half of them to sell them for, for rent and beer money. But I noticed uh, the other half of my closet's gone, so I think uh, you were doing some brazen too, weren't you? No, no, never. Oh. I, uh, I, don't, I don't even like yeah. black. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I, so I did a little bruising to your closet. No big. Uh, I left a couple. You got a jacket and, uh, and a wife beater, which I don't understand the name of. You know what they call it, a wife beater? I think it's some racial slur. See, we are sober. Why are we thinking of this? Like, I don't know. It's a racial slur? Like, they, they should so. have a Mexican mannequin in the store, like... <laughs> or an Italian. Or an Italian, yeah. Well, <laughs> Guidos don't wear shirts. I mean, Italians. <laughs> Sorry. They usually take off anything that the police could find blood on. Yeah. No, broke and sober. I'm, uh, I'm pretty broke. I'm pretty uh, sober. Yeah, they, well, we, uh, we managed to buy beer with quarters. Yeah. That's true. And, uh... Even if it is bad beer, it's still beer. Hey, well, you know, and, uh... We're gonna thank Budweiser for not suing right now. I'll drink to that. However... Indeed. Broken sober, a lot of a lot of things follow you when you're sober. Little, little things in the back of your mind that follow you around in your head. Like, I need gas. But I can't eat gas. Then you think, I need food. But my car doesn't run on food. We should make a car that runs on food. Has that been done yet? No? Great. Great. <laughs> Good answer. That's brilliant. Yeah, it runs on food. So we can piss off every third world nation in the world. <laughs> yeah. All right. It started Oh, I spent six, six days starving in the desert. Can I please have that burger? No, I've got to use it to power my Ferrari. <laughs> See you later, dude. Gotta go to town and buy booze. <laughs> I have to uh, buy this cheeseburger so I can get my Ferrari to go buy booze. Which is not true. I drive a piece of shit car, he drives a piece of shit car, and neither one of them runs on cheeseburgers. Though many a cheeseburger have been consumed inside of them. Yeah. I know, because there's wrappers in the floorboards. Yeah. That's another fun part about being broke. Have you ever gone through your car? <laughs> your car is just as bad as mine, too. Mine's it's messy as hell. Mine's a little worse. Uh, I, the last time I cleaned it, I found fries that were Kevin's, and they were... <laughs> Kevin hadn't ridden in my car for over a year. <laughs> since, since like the turn of the century or some yeah. shit. And you so. and you always like when you find the little papers, you pull them out and shake them. <laughs> Just in case there's a penny like rolling around in them. My favorite is the ashtray, non-smokers. They, th they throw their money in the ashtray, you know, your change is in there, you non-smoker types. Bastards. Yeah, you and your change. But no, it's in there with the uh, piece of bubble gum that's stuck to the side that you have to chisel off when you buy it second hand. But there's always money in the in the ashtray for a non-smoker. Well, I grew up around a lot of non-smokers, so I don't know why, but I always empty the ashtray and like look through this shit, that, picking through cigarette butts and cigar, you know, just junk that's in my ashtray. And, and it's just 
you get your hopes up and you find a washer and you think, is that oh, a quarter? Oh, man, I and hate the you washer. blow the ashes out of the middle of it and it's like, oh. Yeah. And it's just a total double downer because you, you think it's money. At first you pick up the washer, you're like, yes, it's a penny. Oh, that's a washer. And then you're even more bummed because it's like, what broke? Where did this come from? Yeah. <laughs> Where in my car lost a washer? And you never find out until that one day when you're cruising along, you look at your buddy and it's like, you like this tune? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Windows nice, cool. Like it. I think I just lost a washer in my chair. Actually. <laughs> That's <all> right. <laughs> it's kind of. That thing's older than both of us put together. Yeah, send donations. We're uh, we're trying to get a new set, yeah. a better closet. Yeah. If the house is attached, we really thank you for the donations. Or new chairs. Yeah. We'll take new chairs. Something closet sized. Preferably. Yes. Very very closet sized. But big closet. Big closet. Big closet. Think big closet. We're gonna upgrade someday, but you know, and and when when you're broke, you also become sober. You know, being the gist of the story here is that we're not entirely alcoholics, but we enjoy good booze. We we drink a lot of booze. I mean, we don't drink, you know, 24/7. I show up to work sober, you know, 80 percent of the time. I'm sure. Never shown up to work drunk. I've always been drunk by my time to leave. Though. I've seen I've seen it go down. <laughs> <laughs> when I leave, it's a different story because that's going home. It's okay. Well, see, it's different. I work in a restaurant and bar. You work in a theater. Okay, I have like a reason most of the time because there's a bar. But you, there's only a bar once a week. But you totally take advantage of that. I, I love free drinks. And they're not free. I have to pay for them. With your time. I have to pay for them. Yes. We usually just pay for booze. This week we had to work for the booze. We had to sell a couple things, we had to shift some stuff around in our schedules and budgets, but we made it happen. And with being sober, it's funny because I, I'm usually the type of person that's up really late. I'm, I'm a, a very, very bad night owl. I, I saw the sun once in 89, it was great. It was cool. Didn't ever want to do it again. It just wasn't that fun for me. So I, I, get, I get a lot of time to think because usually I can just, you know, have some booze, watch a funny movie, uh, think of a stupid idea like there's this retarded guy that films shows in a closet somewhere. I don't know. But I have a lot of time to think, you know. This past week, we've both been broke. I'm sure you thought of some, uh, some early stuff. Yeah, yeah. Girlfriend and I are designing our own video game. Wow, that's that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I always wondered what it like to have a one-legged uh, prostitute you know, bend down and pick up lollipops with her butt cheeks. But yours is more productive, and I like that. Well, I'm, I was thinking if we did this, we could make money off of it. Make, you know couple bucks here and there. Yeah. Royalties. And yeah, at least something, some kind of notoriety. Design a video game. I could I could never design a video game. Because one leg one legged strippers picking up lollipops with their butt would just be a horrible video game for everybody but me. I would enjoy it. Well I know there's some people out there that would enjoy it. And the soundtrack would kick ass. The soundtrack would be awesome. Yeah. Lollipop, lollipop, oh, lolly, lollipop. I think it'd be great. New high score! Right? That, that could be the promo for the game. We could have, you know, one legged prostitute just like lean down and pick up an Xbox controller with her booty. <laughs> I'm sorry for offending anybody at Xbox Foundation, too. Don't be. They don't care. They really don't care about the little man. Because they would have bought us booze. They don't care hey, about Hey, when games. you drink, you play video games. And you have our booze. No, they don't care. They don't care anymore. They don't care about booze. They don't care about games. Which yeah, is sad. It's what sobriety does to them. Because they're sober people. They don't want to sit around and play video games. They want to make money, 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 money. I want to make a little bit of money, have a lot of booze. That's just the way it goes. Well, let's yeah. get back to being uh, sober. Yeah. And broke. If nothing else broke, sometimes you got to take your punches. That's a really good booze right now for bad booze. For bad booze, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you tuning into the Closet of Anger again. <coughs> Hope you enjoy our special outro. It should be uh, moderately entertaining for those of you who are out there and those of you who are on drugs. should be really kick-ass. Um, we love you all. Good night. Buck off.